Good afternoon, everyone. We're up here today in Weber Canyon, about five miles south of Benton City, which is that way. And we're here to look at an interesting feature in the canyon walls here, which I'll show you from a distance. We've got our car here for scale and another car coming up the road. Pretty busy road, surprisingly. What I wanted to show was these two basalt layers here. And there's something interesting between the two flows, which is what my wife suggested I call this series where I talk about things that happen between basalt flows. This lower unit here is the Pomona basalt. And above it, is the Elephant Mountain Basalt. As we get closer to the canyon wall, some things start to pop out, like this red unit here, which is a more oxidized portion of the Pomona Basalt. And that kind of gray unit in between the Pomona and the Elephant Mountain, there's some features, like up here, there's a bit of uh, like cobbly material and broken up stuff in there. So let's go up the canyon a little bit further and find a spot where it actually approaches the road. See, it kind of dips down towards the road right here. Now the car's back that way and that gray unit dips down towards the road here, goes under this uh, more sedimentary deposit, and then starts coming out. Let's get up nice and close here. Does this look familiar to anyone? We have an intermixed basalt and very fine-grained, gray, brittle, friable, which means that it breaks apart easily, clay material. And if you said pepperite, then you're right. And maybe you watched my other video where I drove an hour and a half north towards Vantage, Washington to find pepperite in the, diatom in the diatomaceous earth up there. We have a similar situation here, where between the Pomona and the Elephant Mountain above it, the Elephant Mountain is about 11 million years old or so. The Pomona is 12, something like that. Maybe 12.4. And if you're watching today, this is recorded on the same day as Nick Zentner presented his Drumheller Channels video, uh, Pop-Up Geology about an hour and a half away north near the Drumheller, at the Drumheller Channels. And he was talking on the Saddle Mountain basalts there, which are over the Pomona and over there, they're more over the Priest Rapids and the Rosa Flows. But over here, they overlie the Pomona. And between them, there's a gap of at least a million years, if not a little more, where there was enough time for this clay and sedimentary, fluvial lacustrine deposit to form. Here at Weber Canyon, it's only about a meter and a half thick or one and a half feet thick. I can't remember what the exact thickness is. This looks like a meter, two meters almost, where I'm standing. But we have a lot of features of the interplay of basalt and clay, or soft sediment, underneath it, where the overlying Elephant Mountain basalt was heavy enough to, you know, squish the clay. It also, this heavy Elephant Mountain basalt squished the clay. It also invaded it, which is how you get pepperite, because the hot basalt invaded the cooler, wetter sediment and, you know, exploded, popped, fragmented and rapidly quenched and cooled, which is why you get features like this that are kind of wavy and 
all intermixed. And there's also these features on the margins between the basalt and the clay underlying material that's contact metamorphism, where this stayed relatively intact as the basalt hit it at, you know, 1,000, 1,200 degrees or so, and cooked the outer margin of the clay to form actually kind of pseudo columns in the clay, which is, I thought, I think pretty interesting. You can see they're kind of coming out at the camera here, pointing out towards us, whereas they're more perpendicular in this view here. So that goes towards the direction of the cooling. And we get things like random pieces of blocks of basalt in the clay area. This clay, uh, this unit is the Rattlesnake Ridge interbed, which here is only a meter and a half thick or so. But over, you know, a few miles west, I don't know, maybe 50 miles, 20 miles, as you go west from here, it thickens and is up to 30 meters thick, closer to Yakima and the Cascade region there. Now, what happens in this case, if you like Nick Zentner's uh, German chocolate cake analogy, is he kind of uses it as a way to demonstrate, you know, the layering upon layering of basalts that flooded the valley here, the Columbia Basin. And what happens is, if you're making a German chocolate cake, maybe you only have one thick chocolate cake layer. And in order to add the frosting, you cut it in half and remove or erode away the upper half of the uh, German chocolate cake slash basalt. And then you have to deposit a layer of frosting or the Rattlesnake Ridge interbed in this case. And then what you do next is deposit the next layer of German chocolate cake or the Elephant Mountain in this case. Which if it's hot or too heavy, then it can start to squish that underlying layer of frosting. And you get all sorts of unfortunate side effects in cake anyway. Whereas here there's more interesting features like the way that it kind of dips down into the clay here and squeezes up the clay in other areas. I'll just point out this feature here, which is a... It looks like a little bit of the clay was actually entrained in the basalt and brought up totally separate from the clay and then cooled with a little quench margin around it. And then the relationship is also inverted in some cases where you have pieces of basalt that break off and get entrained in the clay underneath.